It's the National Football League on EA Sports, and we've got a showdown in the sunshine. Two teams just about a three and a half hour drive from each other on Florida's I-75. The Jags and Bucks are underway. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Well, the Jaguars ready to go on offense for the first time. And they're led by the former number one pick of the draft in his third season now, Charles, Trevor Lawrence. And you want to talk about enormous expectations being placed on a quarterback. How about what Trevor Lawrence faced coming out of college? But the good thing for him, he's used to it. He had the same type of expectations leaving high school and going to Clemson. They always expect him to be a franchise savior, whatever team he joins. And to his credit, he shouldered those expectations. And he's doing everything in his power to follow through. Lawrence going to put it up right away. And Jones has it over the middle. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. A good safe pass there right off the bat. That's almost a rhythm play. That's what we like to call it. Get them into rhythm early, something safe, something they're confident about, something they feel good. And once that's completed, then you just keep moving from there because the confidence elevates. A man coming off an 1,100-yard campaign last year. Here's Travis Etienne. And this will be a Jaguars first down as he'll take this up to the 38-yard line. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's Lawrence. That's complete to Parker Washington. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. 23 yards, the final tally. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness, there's a premium for all of that now. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Straight ahead, ETM. And he'll follow his blockers there all the way down to the 23-yard line. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run. And let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down. Otherwise, it's going to be a long afternoon. On first down, right back to ETN. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. They've taken this opening kickoff and marched it right down the field defensively. Not much resistance. And that's the point because my admiration is for the guys moving the ball right now. They know what they're doing. Their plan is working. But I flip it over and watch and say, okay, what are you going to do to change things up? Because if you don't, they're going to put that ball in the end zone real soon. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. It's pretty early in the game, but they've already tried to establish him not just as a runner, but as a receiver as well. Didn't happen there, but I wouldn't be surprised at all to see them try again shortly. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. From the shotgun, Lawrence. Now he's got it. And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, and now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might and he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Luke Farrell taking it in from two yards out. And the Jaguars are on the board first here on the road in Tampa. That's just a solid, methodical drive to start this game. And how about how it culminated? Doing exactly what they wanted to do, getting the ball downfield, and then running it into the end zone. I'm just telling you, partner, when you run it in rather than throw it in, that hurts the defense psychologically a heck of a lot more. 
A good hold in these wet conditions. The point after is up and good, and it's now a 7 0 game. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. So here are the Buccaneers ready to go on offense with a new man at the helm here for 2023 in his sixth season now in the NFL, Baker Mayfield. And he's a guy who plays with a lot of emotion. He's learned how to channel it really positively because when he throws the football downfield and makes a big play, He'll be the first guy downfield to celebrate with you. But also, when his team needs that confidence, when they need that jolt, they turn to him, and he's ready to provide it. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now a third-round pick a year ago. Here's Rashad White. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Throwing Mayfield. And, and oh, it caught it up, and the Jags grab it. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. So a first quarter fumble in the rain, and this isn't supposed to let up. They've had flash flood warnings just west of here, so they better get used to this. And it's hard to do real early in the game because you're so amped up and you're trying to do so much. You've got to get used to it, though. You've got to focus in on the ball, make sure you're taking care of it. That one cost them. On first and 10, it's ETN. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Ball on the 40 now. Here's second and nine. Now Lawrence. To the sideline, wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. The result, only four yards there on the play, and it brings up third and five now. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. From the gun, it's Lawrence. That is incomplete. The Bucs defense stiffens and pushes this to fourth down. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. So Lawrence will exit, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. From the right hash, this from 53. That's leaking to the right, and he missed it by a foot or two. It's no good, and this will remain a one-touchdown game. Trying to build on that opening drive touchdown, but the drive stalls out. And then you get the missed field goal here, so they wind up with nothing to show from drive number two. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. 
The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. And Godwin going to have a Bucks first down as he'll take this down to the 44-yard line. And now Mayfield on the bootleg. Right back to Chris Godwin. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Give him back-to-back -back catches now. That one for 16 and another first down. So the completion there, Charles, looking at this defense, certainly in for a tough task here this afternoon. What are some of the keys for them if they want to come out on top? Well, the first thing, partner, is they just allowed a completion there. They don't want to get a string of those going. Let him get his confidence. Let him get into the rhythm of the game, the flow of the game, and all of a sudden, he's feeling like he can do no wrong. You want to really get after his timing a little bit, knock a few balls away, and make things uncomfortable for him, because if he feels relaxed, you are in for a tough afternoon. This second and four. Opting to run again here with White. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. And that's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. Third down and one. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. That is caught. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Now a first and 10 at the 11. They'll go up the middle with White, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. All around great play by Devin Lloyd, using his athleticism to get to the backfield and his strength to stop him for a loss. After one, 7 nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now in Tampa Bay. It's the Buccaneers in control of the football. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. Mayfield now. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. That's good, the completion there for seven yards. And that'll bring us to a third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. From the gun, Mayfield. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Jacksonville's pass defense holds serve. Fourth down. What an excellent defensive stand there in the red zone. Nice tight coverage. They certainly recognized how important it was to bring up fourth down here. And his kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. After the main field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. And just shutting him off there. Pass midfield. Jamal Agnew. And he will score. Touchdown. 
I know a lot of special teams coaches, they just want to keep it away from him because that's what he can do. And others have egos that their players can't keep up with. And they say, challenge him, kick it to him. The way he runs as fast as he is, I wouldn't challenge him at all. I'd do everything possible to keep it away. He is just a blur when he gets a full head of steam and he got a full head of steam there. Now McManus to tack on the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. And no doubt one of the most, if not the most exciting play we'll see in this game. The kick return all the way to the end zone for six points. So let's try this again. After the kick return TD, here's yet another kickoff. Taking it about the one. Now a hit and a loose football. And the Jags grab it. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. So problems compounding themselves here on the return. They just give up the touchdown, and now they lose the football. Yeah, partner, things are starting to unravel a little bit for them right in front of our eyes. They're going to be looking for some answers and quickly. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And this not an easy situation. You're down early in the elements. You're on the road. How do you get the mojo back? Well, one thing is to remember that as an offensive player, you have a much better idea of what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go than the defender. So in this case, because you know it, you can make your cuts with a little more decisiveness, maybe a second fake, some double moves, things of that nature, to go ahead and try and put some pressure on the defense. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Now a give up the middle. This is White down at the 35. It'll be second down. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. From the 35, here's second down at seven. To throw, Mayfield. That's into a crowd and intercepted. It's Devin Lloyd with a pick, and the Jags will take over here just shy of the 30. But just a lot going on there in the middle of the field, and this one winds up a turnover. Yeah, they're running a crossing route here, and the idea of it is to get defenders confused about who to go with. But if you throw it too early, sometimes it's your quarterback that gets confused, and here he throws it into coverage and gets it intercepted. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant, 
a lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Lawrence, complete to Jones. And he will have a Jaguars first down as they get five there on third and two. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Here's a second and eight. Now Lawrence to throw. Finding room at midfield, and he takes it across the 50 to the 46-yard line. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. A give to ETN running right. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. Getting to him for the loss there. That's Kalijah Kansi. That was well defense right there. He saw the play in front of him and able to hold the point of attack. Then he sheds him and goes and makes a tackle for a loss. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. Now Lawrence. And this throw incomplete. Well, the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. Well, he'd been targeted quite a bit on this drive, and finally, I think the guys on the defensive side, they said no more. They slapped the double coverage on him, made it very tough for him to get the ball. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Here's Lawrence to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs 22-yard line. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds him for the first down. Put a man in motion left, Ridley. Now they show Jet Sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. And he's brought down after a very nice gain. 60 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Travis Etienne there to make the grab. And the Jaguars had six to their lead. They went five wide in that offensive set. And racing, going three wide is a big deal. To go five, how about the way that they finish things off? <laughs> Did you just fit a race car reference into the game? Zoom, zoom. How about the way that you play? When you go five wide, that means you're going fast now. Zoom, zoom indeed. Extra point from McManus is good. And the lead is up to 18 now.
After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. From the end zone, here's Devin Tompkins. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And this, let's face it, an important drive if they're going to get back into this ballgame. Think about going into the locker room down 21 to 10 as opposed to 21 to 3. 21 to 10, a little more optimism, a little more bounce around the locker room, a little more discussion about how they're going to finish this thing off. 21 to 3, I think discouragement clouds that locker room. Yeah, and I think a touchdown much bigger than a field goal on this drive just to get into the end zone and get that momentum. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Second and seven from the 20. Mayfield. He completes it to Evans. And Evans will have a box first down as he'll get this up close to the 30-yard line. Nine yards that time. It's been a very one-sided game so far. they got to change what they're doing right now, don't they? You can't wait till the halftime speech to make an adjustment. No, you can't because if you're doing it right, you're adjusting from series to series, and they need a big adjustment here to try and put some points on the board. Mayfield throw on target to Godwin here. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Now that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit. And they get one here in the passing game. First down, Mayfield. That's complete to White. Call it a gain of three on the play, and that's going to bring up second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Another catch by White. Back-to-back -back plays. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. And again, it's Mayfield. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. First and 10 here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, there's something about narrowing it to a two-score game at half that makes it feel like much less of an obstacle. Meanwhile, Mayfield's throw complete to Otten. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. The Bucks passing game looking good on this drive. It's a first down. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage, and that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Mayfield with it once more. Finding Otten once more. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. The coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. That's what it is. 
So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And this one is right through, and that'll get the deficit down to 15. So a late three there, and that'll help as they head into the break. Talk about situational football and something they've worked on since the OTAs and mini camps the previous summer. They take care of the ball, get three points, knowing they're going to get the ball to start the second half. That's the old two-for-one special to finish things off. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. So we are at halftime here on Christmas Eve. You want the third quarter already? No problem. Let's do it. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. By no means certainly are they out of this contest. Two-score game start of the third quarter, but you feel like if they don't get points and then they give up points, then it can become a slippery slope. This feels like an important possession. Yeah, and that slope becomes even more slick if you come away empty-handed on this drive because then you give them a chance to extend their lead. You need some kind of points here, even if it's just a field goal. It's what I call one of those calming drives, try and slow things down a little bit. Looking downfield for Godwin. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. I'm sure this isn't a novel thought, but maybe run some simpler routes instead of trying to get it all back in one shot. Defense certainly appears to be ready for him. Try and get it back little by little instead of in big chunks. Here's second and 10. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. On third down, Mayfield. He's got his target. That's complete, and he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Being chased out left. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit, and he gets a small gain on the play. Mayfield to throw it. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. Rayshon Jenkins picks it off. And the Jaguars will have solid field position here as they take over at their 45-yard line. Well, they're certainly in a bad way right now. Not so bad that you can call this one over already, 
but bad enough that you know you can't toss an interception to open the second half. This just ratchets up the pressure on this team's defense right now. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. They'll start following the interception in great field position at the 45. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at the 45. They'll look to ETN to start things out. There he goes left side. And this will be a Jaguars first down as the tackle made it about the 43 yard line. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end formation. Those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, and that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. On first and 10, it's Lawrence. And his throw's going to be incomplete. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. Was this game announced as a night game prior to, and maybe his rhythm is confused. just off? He's got know. thrown off. He's going to have to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. They'll throw this out wide and complete it to Ridley. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there? Swarming to it and not allowing that to happen. Did not let him get downfield. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Now Lawrence. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 27-yard line. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. ETN up the middle. What a great effort there. He's going to get this inside the 15, and they'll spot it at the 13-yard line. Nice run. 87 yards for him on the ground now, as he has been terrific here this afternoon. He's turning in a pretty impressive performance running the football and a big reason why they have this nice lead. And in days gone by, we would clip this out and put it up on the refrigerator, wouldn't we? Clip out the box score. Nowadays, not too many newspapers out there. Maybe you screenshot it online. So they'll get eight out of that completion, and it'll be second in a couple. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Zay Jones from four yards out. And the Jaguars take a three-touchdown lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical. That's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. McManus's point after is good. And the lead opens up now to 22 points.
After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. I kind of feel like they've reached a do or die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 27. They'll start here with a handoff to White. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here, and what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. From the 33, here's second and four. Going with White here, toss left. And he'll push ahead for about three to the 36. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Third and short yardage, Mayfield. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. I'm getting the sense that this offense is getting frustrated. Here we are into the third quarter, and they've had plenty of opportunities to get in sync. Thus far, that hasn't happened. They're looking for answers both on the sidelines and in the huddle looking at each other. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Yeah, call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. As the offense returns, let's take a look at running back Travis Etienne. We've seen him be good so far. He's hoping to continue that trend here in quarter number three. And typically when you see guys running it this well, they see the game in slow motion, don't they? They see the cuts happen, they see the blocks happen, they feel really good about their vision, and then they use their legs to find that open space. And he's had some good help up front to boot. And that throw behind his man, he missed him, incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Third quarter action, and we appreciate you spending your Christmas Eve right here with us. Second and 10. Look at the big man rumble. And he'll take it to the 43-yard line. A gain there of 21 yards. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Here's a give to Etienne. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Those are the plays this defense needs with the deficit they're facing. It certainly is, and they've got to continue to swarm the football and hope that someone, while they're holding up the ball carrier, can get in there and rake it and lock it free. They need to get some takeaways as well. On second down, here's Lawrence. Completes it to Evan Ingram. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks' 32-yard line. A really nice gain of 25 yards. This is just more of the same. This defense has had no answer on a lot of these throws. They've let these receivers run wild. And here's another completion for good yardage. We're off to the fourth quarter here on Christmas Eve. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. 
from the 32 now. Here's first and 10. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. He'll work his way up the middle for a gain of about four. Second down. Holding offense. Ezra Cleveland, the guard, called for the penalty there. A handoff for ETN. And down inside the 35, he goes to the 32-yard line. 96 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Play action, it's Lawrence. And that's going to be incomplete. I think it's fairly safe to call this game over, but they're still trying to bomb it downfield and add to their lead. Almost makes you start to feel for the defense and root for them a little bit, too. The offense on third down, they have been superb. Five for six to this point. This is third and ten. Off the play fake. Here's Lawrence. That is caught. And they move this all the way down to the nine. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. They have the nice cushion. <laughs> they just want to pour it on right now, still throwing the football. And I know my background says, why do you need to do this? Just go ahead and run out the clock and get a win. But as many people pointed out to me, this is a video game, man. <laughs> go ahead and put the numbers up. Sportsmanship, not an issue. Exercise those fingers. And they'll run with ETN. And they get him down at the one. He had the broken tackle, but ultimately could not get into the end zone. A good run, eight yards there, and it'll be second and goal. That's a great run right there on first down. Didn't quite get into the end zone, but now you've set yourself up for at least two, maybe three more shots from close range. Once more, ETN, and this time he is into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. So they brought the extra bulk in down on the one-yard line, and they're able to push this one across. Yeah, I can just see your face right now because I know we're mind-melding on this one. Coach Madden would love this. Power football, hat on a hat, chest to chest, driving forward, touchdown. Now McManus for the extra point. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it was capped off by a Travis Etienne touchdown run. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers you would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us? He's got a man complete. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Trey Palmer. 78 yards, and the Bucs are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. He's got them out now to a three-score lead here in the fourth quarter after that one, C.D., and well, he looked right off the line like he knew that that ball was coming his way, and he secured it for six points. Yeah, and I think when you're leading by a healthy margin already, 
it actually loosens you up and allows you to take maybe a few more chances and definitely play with more confidence because he certainly saw something he could exploit in the defense and he made sure to let his quarterback know just get it to me and the rest was all up to him and he delivered and made it a three score game. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. Jacksonville offense gets the ball back. Travis Etienne and company head back out there. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back because that means everything's coming together for you. Big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. They'll start on the ground, ETN. And a nice run past the 30-yard line there. 112 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Good gain there on first down. It keeps him in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. They go play action with Lawrence. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Washington. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. And even with the game seemingly in hand, they're continuing to fire away, pressing the ball down the field. Listen, it's worked all day. No reason to go away from it now. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. So it looks like somebody may have forgotten the snap count and a five-yard penalty ensues. Well, this O-line's been great. They've got the big lead, so give them a pass there, I guess. Yeah, I would think so, because if we were grading them on their performance in this game, a lot of pluses in their boxes so far. A full start backs them up five, first and 15. On the counter, ETN. They get the penalty yardage back, plus a yard. Six-yard gain, and it's second and nine. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Second and nine. Another tote for ETN. And a short gain down to about the 33. And not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Got to get to the 26 for a first. This is third down. Lawrence. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. And the Bucs are going to have it here at 
their own 32-yard line. A few things better than a big man interception. You can always tell right when they get the football, there's that level of excitement and nervousness and also like, what the heck do I do with this thing? <laughs> and you say, no better sight? Well, not for the quarterback who just threw it. It's bad enough to throw a pick, but to throw one to the big guy? But you're right about that. Now what do I do with it? But what's fun about it is, you know they're going to be in the film room after this ball game, telling all their teammates, maybe I should shift over to offense. I've got skills. What do you think? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I always find myself cheering for them after they intercept it. Unfortunately here, he couldn't make it into the end zone. Following the interception, Mayfield. He completes it right side to White. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and it'll be second down. You got the big lead defensively willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. They're going to hurry back to the line now. To throw Mayfield. Left side here, that's complete to Godwin. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. He has a first down, and that catch will also put him over 100 yards receiving now on the afternoon. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. They've got a first and ten as they search for a late score. Mayfield now from the 50. Slant route going to be caught by Palmer. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. 11 more on that one and another first down. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. Second and 10. Going to the air again with Mayfield. There goes a deep ball in zone. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. Well, these guys are not going to go out with their tails between their legs. They're going to keep taking their shots until the clock's at triple zeros. But that one, like a lot of others, winds up incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. Seven catches for him now, and this last one, a first down. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth, but a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Now a second and ten. Now Mayfield. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Looks like they're going to keep throwing to the bitter end. This one's long since over, but give them credit. They're going to go down fighting. That one, incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Mayfield looks to throw. Evans has it left side. And he is out of bounds right around the ten-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop.
Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Are you I, one of those guys I'm a little skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you trust skeptical. it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Got your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive.